So a bit about this work. Um, this work comes from um, a modality called transformative energy facilitation, which I was taught by um, a man called Kenneth Hover, who lives in Arizona. <laughs> and um, it, it, it just allows this playfulness and, and imagination to come through and do really, really deep work sometimes actually. And it just happens without us having to go through the heaviness of doing deep work. And um, so this is my teacher. And I, as Salo mentioned, I travel a Sufi path and I have been on the path for the past eight years. And um, so I'm, I'm sitting here with a picture of my guide behind me. And my guide is um, Sudanese. Um, like I mentioned yesterday, for those of you who've been on the, um, in the opening ceremony, and at the mention of my guide, I ask for peace for the people in Sudan. And um, so naturally, what would happen is that I would ask my guides to be present during the meditation and ask for your guides to also be present during the meditation and ask them to collaborate um, where possible. Um, however, like there is no further mention of my own lineage during the meditation. Um, and I am on Egyptian land, the Nile is 30 minutes away. So in honoring of the water, I honor the Nile and uh, I ask the Nile to also be present here today. And um, yeah, the pyramids are an hour away. <laughs> So also them. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's such an honor to be here and to be on this land, to be born on this land as well. And um, so if, if you would um, like to maybe introduce yourself or maybe just bring in the land uh, where you are right now. And my question is, what story seeds are you bringing here today? Um, maybe mention one seed um, so we, that we would have that present with us during the meditation. Um, yeah, we can, Salo, if you'd like to start a popcorn, a round of shares, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Sarah. Okay, so the seed that I bring to, to this conversation is the seed of community and how to build trust within the community, how to learn ways of overcome uh, conflicts that eventually they are going to, to appear as part of life and how to navigate those conflicts within the community. And I pass the ball to Namali. Thank you. Um, I'm looking for the word. Uh, it's not exactly hope, um, but I think expectation. Um, I've started on this journey uh, partly as healing for myself, but also um, because I want to help build a more nurturing place for my daughter, who is three now. And I have that sense um, that you mentioned, Salo, of conflict where I'm now faced with the question of or oh, traditional school versus, you know, do what's right for us. Um, so I think I bring, 
I think my seed is expectation, actually, hope, hope and expectation. Um, and I pass the ball to Liz. Thank you. Um, I'm coming to you from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, which is on the unceded territory of the Mi'kma'ki people, covered by the treaties of peace and friendship. It's unceded territory. Uh, the seed that I bring into this space today, it, it's a, a, a three-part seed, maybe. Uh, curiosity, creativity, and collaboration. I think is uh, yeah what I want to share, and I pass the ball to Amor. I'm on the phone, and I always find hard to find the menu for a muting. Um, so my name is Amor, which means love in Spanish. I'm a Spanish, and. Yes, I think this it would be that love, creative power, finding my power, standing in my power, you know, it's just being able to bring it forth. Uh, I am in Ireland um, and it's uh, the sunny southeast, the, the sunny southeast part of Ireland, uh, a place called Wexford. It's very green and I'm by the sea. Uh, by the you know the the river coming into the sea uh, so it's a very beautiful I have like a couple of meters away so it's a very beautiful place you can actually google it <laughs> yes and I would love to go to the Nile any room there <laughs> anyway thank you oh, no, I pass the ball to Nicolaus thank you so yeah my name is Nicolaus I'm in Vienna Austria um, can you hear me all right? Um, so this is my first time. Um, not sure what my seat is. I'm uh, in between stories, so to speak, uh, searching for my way or what is mine to do. How can I serve best, maybe? And I guess I would say I bring curiosity and an open mind and I pass the ball to Mariana. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm Mariana. I am uh, um, joining from India, from Oroville today. And I'm also not sure what my seat is, but I'm just kind of exploring what are the ways for us humans to unlearn and to explore different things and to yeah try to see our narrative from a different perspective and I'm not sure Sarah did you speak yet if not then I will pass the ball to you perfect thank you Mariana thank you everyone um I will um uh, perhaps also share my seed and then we can start. Um, but before I share my seed, I'm, I would like to ask you to um, honor your needs. So if you need to move, you can move. If you need to eat, eat, drink water. If you need to be still, if you need to have your cameras off, also you can do that and uh, you can do this with your eyes closed or open i find that when i close my eyes doing this work i tend to fall asleep <laughs> so um if it is um yeah if it's available to you to to stay awake as you close your eyes you could you're more than welcome to do that just listen to what wants to unfold for you and how you want to do this um and yeah my my seed of a story is a story where 
um, parents and children are deeply honored and integrated in society because I feel that um, modern day societies and, and modernism has kind of separated um, child tending roles and children from everyday life. So my, my seed of a story is a story where they kind of interweave together again as they have for millennia. Um, and yeah, so I will start. <laughs> so if you would like, you can just, yeah, again, be in the, in the, in the most comfortable position for you. You can have your cameras on or off, but I invite you to imagine all of us in a big bubble that is our big container. And within our big container, we can just plant those seeds that we have. Um, and we can kind of program it to be the perfect or the most optimal environment for those seeds to flourish. And we can also revisit this container that we have today across time and space for information on what we need to do next. And within the big container, I would like to invite in our guides. So each and everyone's guides, I'd like to invite my guides and everyone's guides here. And if guide is not something that you work with, Perhaps you can invite in an element or the land or any kind of support that you would like to have right now. And throughout this process of allowing the story to unfold, perhaps you'd like to invite the waters since the waters are carrying the conference. Perhaps you want to Invite in the element of fire for its transmutation powers. Perhaps wind to carry your story forward and back and all across the world. Perhaps you want to invite in earth. And in fact, I would like for earth to be present as an element, as the mother, as an ever giving and ever generous being and we honor the earth, we give thanks for having earth give and give and give constantly and consistently without asking for anything in return. It is the epitome of unconditional giving. And now let's imagine that we have our own bubbles within that bubble. So these personal bubbles are our own auras. And I'd like for us to have awareness of where each and every one of us ends and the other begins so that we can cultivate a sense of safety because that is very important. And it is very important, not only in this work, but in everyday life. <laughs> um, so just, being aware of our own aura. Maybe you want to give it a color. Maybe you want to tend to it a bit, light incense, or have, you know, like optimize it for you a bit. Maybe that's not something that's accessible for us in our day to day, but we can treat our aura as our very own space, beautiful space, beautify it in whichever ways we want. Maybe hang a picture there or maybe tweak or shift the temperature a bit to be the most comfortable for you. And then let's become aware of our own grounding cords. 
And I like to imagine it like an extension of the tailbone dropping into the center of the earth. And the earth is just like really welcoming it and really expressing its glee that you have finally decided to extend this grounding cord. And feel that grounding energy coming in through. And through, throughout the process, we're going to, where necessary, replace this grounding cord and bringing in a brand new one where if, it, if, if it's called for. Um, and through this grounding cord, we're receiving our nourishing and nourishment. I like to work with plant metaphors. So like imagining ourselves as trees, perhaps receiving the light from the sun and also receiving the nourishment from the earth. So we're basically channels. And as we do this, being aware of our own auras, I'd like to invite the notion that if anything, feels like you're pushing too hard or is just not really aligned, you can just toss it. There's this invitation of choosing what feels most aligned for you and yeah, just disregard the rest. And let's imagine that we have this seed bank, all those seeds that we've been collecting, perhaps out of a sense of scarcity, perhaps out of a sense of generosity. Maybe we view ourselves as future ancestors and this is our sense of responsibility to save those seeds for the future. And perhaps there's a fear there of maybe those seeds would no longer exist. Maybe there is a sense of exaggerated responsibility. If I don't do it, no one else will. And let's imagine the bigness of this as a calling, as a message. If this is your calling, I honor it. And also maybe tune into the body and feel where it might feel heavy to bear this responsibility single-handedly. And among those seeds, like we're imagining like a big pile of seeds, a huge pile of potential dreams, potential futures, potential opportunities, potential identities, potential constellations, communities, family, land, you could have been so many other people. You could have been in so many other places and you could have held so many other seeds. And these seeds represent all those probable and potential lives and possible lives, probable, possible, potential lives. So it's a lot and it can be overwhelming. We can really be drowning in seeds if that is what we're scanning for. I could be this, I could be that. The world could be this and the world could be that. But among those seeds, there is this one seed that is meant to kind of unfold and unfurl into this big, big tree when we come from different parts of the world. So the invitation here is to imagine a tree that you connect to, that you can, that you see that is maybe available in your own ecology. So some people, for some people, this might be an oak tree. For others, this might be a tamarind tree. For me, it could be a palm tree, just the biggest tree. And this seed is yours to cultivate into that tree. And with that knowing, 
we're acknowledging that it's not only our responsibility. We are in collaboration and cooperation with the earth, with the sun, with water, with heat and fire. We are in collaboration with all the elements and all the sources of life to bring that seed into its future possibility of becoming that big tree. And not only that, we're also in collaboration with life force itself. And as you acknowledge that, imagine that you're scanning the room, this big room full of seeds for that one seed. And it just kind of does this little dance for you. It's like, here I am, I'm right here. Maybe it glimmers or shines a bit more brightly. And it's just so happy that you finally are becoming aware of it and giving it that time of day. And perhaps notice that there is this sense of FOMO maybe. I might be missing out on all those other dreams and acknowledge the fact that you're now choosing this one. And as you choose that seed, it chooses you. And with that seed in hand, I invite all of our guides to kind of collaborate together and maybe give us a glimpse into the future of what the seed would look like, where it wants to be planted, how it wants to be planted, with all the technicalities. And we can ask them to do this in the background so that we don't have to mentally worry about this. So this process can be happening in the background as we continue our journey with the seed. And as we do this, let's also kind of invite in all the, the aspects of self and the characteristics and traits this seed calls for us to have that we do have and are possible for us, but maybe we were just not aware of them. Maybe we did not know how to utilize them, how to befriend them. Maybe they're in the shadow Maybe they are requiring of us to kind of maybe embody some more discipline sometimes or more flow to soften a bit, to invite in tenderness. Whatever it is, it would be different for each and every one of us. For me, I know it's that trait of cultivating structure without leaning into rigidity. So like, how can structure be soft for me? How can it be flowing? And to remain soft throughout actually. So we're going to be looking at all those aspects of self and kind of magnetize them towards us. And as they line up in front of us, or maybe they want to make a circle around you, we're going to imagine kind of magnets, maybe one be behind us and one in front of us to release all those stuck energies that would stand in the way of us embodying those aspects and anything, maybe other stories, old stories, maybe stories that we have um, taken upon us to bring forth. Maybe they are stories from our ancestors or histories that might that we might feel otherwise would be forgotten all the stories that are not ours all the stories that we have been collecting and keeping in and maybe hoarding a bit my grandmother used to have this saying of don't be like the guardians of the junk and um 
So maybe honoring the guardians of the junk and asking them, hey, we honor you, but this might not be our role. And give them whatever they need and let them continue on their journey. We're going to release those old stories into those magnets and ask our guides to kind of help us in deciding on which aspects of self we want to have on our journey, on our team with this story unfolding. And we're going to kind of ask and invite in those aspects to come and be next to us, to come closer, more into our more intimate circle, uh, our team, basically the team we are in conversation with every day. And as we select or as we invite those aspects of self, we're going to imagine that we are kind of giving them an orientation of who we are, what we're up to, what life has, where life has brought us and why we're here today and what it's like to be who we are right here, right now. So we're giving them an orientation, letting them know, so this is how old we are. This is what we've been through. And you are welcome to be part of my team because we have this work to do and it's going to be so much fun. And when it's not fun, we're going to remember why we're doing it. And we're going to ask our guides to also gently beam those aspects of self through our grounding cord from the bottom of our feet all the way to the top of our, he of our heads so that we're fully embodying them. And perhaps if you are being shown a point on your body that could act as a reminder of those aspects, locate it and remember it. If you're not, maybe you're shown an image of a talisman that would remind you of these aspects. Perhaps also this talisman could rem remind you of your seed. And the invitation here is, if that's available to you, maybe plant an actual seed after our time together and tend to it. The invitation is to have this seed be in conversation with you and for you to be able to speak a common language because language can act as a bridge. Words are bridges. And as we embody those aspects of self, let's just become aware of that seed again. Maybe you want to give it a name. Maybe if it's still being mysterious, because sometimes our dreams, our very own stories are perhaps not resentful, but they're just questioning why it took you so long. And if it has taken you so long, just sit together, try and acquaint yourself with that story and be in silence. Silence has an immense presence that oftentimes we kind of disregard. And if it's not silence, maybe you want to create Speaking of silence, I got dropped off the call. And where I'm also curious is what that means. So maybe we might lose touch and lose that connection. 
and lose sight of our stories. And maybe that's okay. I think in fact it is okay. And me, I've learned this from Bronte, from Weaving Earth, where they would honor the servers of Zoom and acknowledge the lands on which the servers are as part of their opening. Um, so in, I, I honor Bronte and the land on which the servers of Zoom are. And yeah, I'm, I feel like maybe we just come closer to that seed and maybe let it know about technology <laughs> and all the weird things that have happened since maybe the industrial revolution, maybe just give it a timeline of where we are on this journey of life because seeds are buried and they, they're pretty agnostic to the things that we hold dear and important and the things that have allowed us to survive so many things so far. And I give thanks to that. I give thanks to being able to be here today because of technology. And I'm just letting the seed know that that's okay. It's not a threat that these people I see on my screen are safe, even though our bodies cannot really respond to one another because I cannot smell you. I cannot see your face and reach out and touch you, but it's safe for us to be here together today. And perhaps before we come to a close, Let's give this opportunity to the stories that we want to have, that have chosen us and that we have chosen to let us know what they need, not just in terms of aspects of self of our own as holders of those seeds, as stewards of that story, as storytellers, as poets, as writers, as dancers, as beings, as ever-evolving beings. Maybe give them the opportunity to be in communication with us about what they need, what kind of, what kind of environment they are asking to be in and Maybe it would require a journey. Maybe we need to be brave in one sense or the other to acquaint ourselves and ourselves with change. So let's bring in the being that is change and the aspect of self that is bravery and kind of have us, have them explain to us what they want to mean. So change might want to mean something different to me than it wants to mean to you. And bravery might look different to me than it might look to you. And let's imagine that we have our own little dictionary right there and we are defining these things for ourselves. So we're going to place the word story there and define it for ourselves. Seed and define it for ourselves. Maybe words, maybe through colors, through sounds. And have the word bravery there. 
the word change. And maybe these things want to become more than just a 2D representation. Maybe they just want to take shape or form beyond that. Maybe bravery wants to be a narwhal. Maybe change wants to be this Arabian horse. I don't know. However it wants to represent itself to you or present itself to you, allow it to come forth. And this would be your team. You have the elements. You have the earth, your guides, those aspects of self. You have the seed of a story. And you have those, this little dictionary that you can add to whenever something comes up that you are maybe in contention with or that feels a bit off. I don't want to embody bravery as it would mean for a warrior bravery means something different to me so never one of these things comes up and you want to redefine it for yourself you are more than welcome to do that and bringing that seed to the center of your own aura and let's imagine that we are sitting in a circle and we each hold our seed in front of us, orienting it to where we are, receiving maybe information or energy from the sun and just allowing the sun to kind of trigger that as trigger that maybe imagining it like a button and pressing that button of you're ready to unfold now and allowing the earth to welcome that seed and now let's just imagine that we are burying those seeds and letting them know that they are safe yes it is dark but this is how we let that story unfold recalling each and every seed that we are bringing to our time here today so we all had our little seed our little intention and having that basically embrace us and guide us for the rest of our journey from now on. And let's become aware of our grounding cord again. And we're going to release this grounding cord and bring up a new one because during this process, we might have changed. We bring up this new grounding cord and we are going to ask our guides to recall our own authentic energies and kind of also let's have them beam up in through our feet, gently all the way to the tops of our heads. And let's also release any stuck energies again through those magnets that we have imagined in front of us and behind us. And I like to do this thing where I imagine that I'm sending a, an etheric or a spiritual text message to the people that I know, letting them know that I've done this work today and that this work has permission and might, if we allow it, to reset our identity, our belief structure, our reality, our bodies even sometimes our relationships and how we relate to the world and let them know that we might change, letting ourselves know that we might change now that we are opening up to letting the story unfold. 
let's just slowly come back to the rooms we're in. And maybe if you'd like to move your fingers a little bit, touch your body, become aware of your body and slowly open your eyes if you've had them closed. And uh, yeah, maybe shake a bit. Thank you. We have a few more minutes if you'd like to share something. So yeah, I want to say it was a beautiful experience. I don't have much experience in this kind of field and I have to admit at some certain points I got lost and I just, for example, couldn't see what my seeds are or the aspects of me. But this also tells me because I am actually in this question of who am I and getting to know myself, what is my path and all of this. So, but what was really beautiful is I could imagine and see really a place in my bubble. At, there was this small stream and a little waterfall and I had a little fire on the side. And I usually have a hard time imagining those things. And also, I want to say, Sarah, your energy is amazing. Your voice is really soothing and calm. And also at the end, you could hear the baby. That was also very beautiful. So yeah, thank you a lot. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm on mute because he's still making those noises. Would anyone else like to share? It's okay if you don't. Hi, I would like to share. I am so happy to be here right now with all of you. I really enjoy imagining the circle because I was feeling the power and the energy of holding this prayer together, holding this energy together as we call our guides, our family, friends, to also ac acknowledge all these energies, the, the elements. And it was really nice to open my eyes and see that the day started. I can see like the, the sun is hitting the mountains here. Maybe I can show it to you. So, the day is starting. Welcome, welcome to, to this new day of Reimagining the Education Conference. So, thank you, thank you, sir. It was a really beautiful way of starting the energy. And also, like, feeling this fresh energy coming, connecting again. Thank you. Thank you, Sevalu. Yes, I would like to say yeah, that, uh, you know, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed all the thing about the trees, the seed, the whole thing, you know. Um, I do meditations about the sun and coming down and all that so I can understand the, the tree thing, you know. And I really could see us all in, in the bubble together. And, you know, I put color to my bubble as well. and. And at some point, quite early, actually, I got emotional. So then I was kind of, okay, I had to keep up with it because when you said, uh, you know, whatever you feel like it's weighing down on you that you've been doing this all alone and da, da, da. So that was like, I started crying then. <laughs> I was like trying to keep up with it. But, uh, you know, it's always interesting, the things that come through, like, for example, the name of the seed, or I like the idea of the dictionary to redefine and to have all the elements of the team. and. I find it interesting, like how, you know, so Nicolas was saying, you know, I'm looking for my path or whatever. And I was saying, how we all inter interrelate as well. 
because you know I'm also looking for my path. I, I have an inkling of things, but you never I never have it like hundred percent sure I want to do this thing and it's clear, crystal clear, you know what I mean? So it's good to have kind of this tool to be able to I'm gonna listen to the recording again. <laughs> Because there's so many things that you may forget, you know, like I was like, you know, if you get an image, I get words or something. If I don't write it straight away because I'm trying to keep up with the meditation, you know, you, you may forget again, you know. So I, I'm always interested in what what comes through doing this, you know, what normally words or, or whatever, or an image or whatever, what comes through. So thank you so much. And, and I think, you know, the baby thing and all that, it's all part of the same, you know, because as you were speaking, I was like... Before that, I was kind of amazed, you know, like, uh, you know, you're, it's only a four-month baby, you know. It reminded me when I had my four-month baby, you know, and the things that come through pregnant women and women giving birth and, you know, the, the it just, I think it gives you a different perspective of life anyway. So thank you so much. Thank you, Amor. Um, it's 2.22 here now. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I I'm I would still invite people to have some water, like enough water, like keep yourself hydrated. Also, as an invitation throughout the day, because we're receiving through much so much through the conference. And uh, yeah, if you would like to leave earlier, that is also welcome. You have seven minutes. And yeah, it is all welcomed all the time. Ask for what you need <laughs> all the time. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our guides because I forgot to do this during the meditation. I'd like to thank our, our guides for being present today and the elements and yeah, our team, uh, our in close team working with us on this dream on this story. Thank you. Thank you all. So this meeting will end in six minutes. I invite you to take your time. And in 36 minutes, we will come back to if you want to do a body session or just change the mood with any other panel, we have um, Biet Po Dan Chi Kun with Julia Strauss. We also have the Coversities Film Festival, the second part, redesigning universities and redefining spaces. So if you want to stay this couple of minutes and if not, go walk a little bit, maybe have a uh, snack, <laughs> take care of yourself and stretch a little bit too. Thank you. Bye See everyone. You. Thank you. Bye. Thank, thank you, you again, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Just take deep breath and inhale your beautiful energies. Thank you very much. See you. Thank you, Nicole.